I have heard many say over the years, God won't give you more than you can handle, or God never gives us more than we can handle. I beg to differ. That is just not the truth, and that is not what is written in the scripture. As it is written, there hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. So that scripture is about the temptation of Satan. From the least to the greatest, the greatest being to steal our faith that we may curse God and die. And God has promised that he will make a way of escape, but it is up to us whether or not we choose to take that avenue of escape or whether we choose to cave to the temptation, whether it is related to the lusts of the flesh or to give in to despair or depression hurt, pain, anger, grief, whatever it is, if we give our burden to the Lord, if we seek him and trust in him and his word, if we put up resistance to what Satan is attempting to do to us, we will be able to bear our temptations. To tell people that God won't give them more than they can bear is to Give those who are weak in the faith and those who are lost false expectations. And yet another reason to rail against God when a trial comes into their life. Why do we suppose so many turn to drugs? Street drugs or prescription drugs, alcohol, sex, gluttony, gambling, self-mutilation. It is because they either don't know how to seek God or they have none to encourage them to seek God. Some, in their separation from God, become hoarders. It is said that there are 9 million hoarders in the USA alone, surrounded by filth, clutter and garbage. And I'm sure there are hoarders all over the earth. They each may not hoard the same things, but the urge is there, and it is a bondage. The same with obsessive compulsive disorders and anorexia and bulimia. People turn often to these things in order to feel a sense of control over their lives, that they feel they lack for one reason or another. People turn to all manner of addictions when they do not know God like they should, or when they feel they have nowhere to turn, when they perhaps suffer abuse of one form or another, or in times of depression and feelings of despair and anxiety, they turn to these things. Even Christians are not immune to these bondages if they are not secure in the Lord, and they don't turn to Him for His help and strength in times of trouble and trial. So we cannot tell people that God won't give them more than they can handle, because it is just not true, and this can bring them under condemnation. Job had more than he could handle without his faith in God. He lost all his family members in one day, with the exception of his wife, who told him to curse God and die. Put yourself in his position. Who amongst us could bear up under such grief without the undergirding of the Lord, without his strength, without putting our faith and trust in him? Why do we think so many give into grief and heartache and some even kill themselves? Because they try to bear their burdens alone without Jesus Christ, without any understanding of his word. Also, perhaps, oftentimes, they have no one to encourage them in the Lord. Oh, the world will offer them counsellors and programs and therapists and psychiatrists, psychologists, everything and anything but the Lord. 
Even Christians will seek out these methods, and churches themselves will offer these inner healing programs and contemplative prayer and yoga and everything under the sun, when what people need is Jesus Christ and a fuller knowledge and understanding of his ability to make them whole and deliver them from their bondage. It is written that Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. It is written, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. We are all going to be tempted and tried and put through the fire at different times and in different ways. As it is written, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. It is also written, Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. What is the law of Christ? His commandments. As it is written, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another, as I have loved you. If we seek the Lord in our times of need, in our times of going through the testing fire, we shall have an unexplainable peace. People will not understand why we are not caving in, why we are able to have strength and joy, even in the face of tragedy. Jesus said, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. It is written, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. A final exhortation I would give to my fellow brethren in dealing with those in bondage of one form or another or in grief is this. As the Lord has been patient and long-suffering with you, do likewise to others and remember that all are different. Not all get the victory as quickly as we would sometimes think they should, but be patient. And when you think you are at the end of your patience, be patient some more, that you may manifest the character and nature of Jesus Christ, that you might let your light shine before men, and that they might glorify God as it is written, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap, if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith.